And then after that, man, it was almost like a panic attack every day. I'd wake middle of the night having a panic attack. I'd started getting like tinnitus. I started getting like a bunch of eye floaters. I started getting like derealization and depersonalization. Mm-hmm. It was just a constant state of like confusion and fear. I was stuttering my words like I couldn't, I couldn't speak. Let me ask you real quick about the panic attacks. Have you ever had a panic attack before all this? No, I didn't know what a panic attack was. So I'm thinking like I have like I must have a brain tumor. That's what I thought at first. I was thinking, dude, I have, I got a brain tumor. Like I'm every day I'm going to bed thinking I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I can't interact with people. I can't go outside without like extreme anxiety. All right, what is going on, guys? This is Mark Millick here with the Moral Medicine YouTube channel. So today we are going to be speaking to Sawyer. Sawyer is a PFS patient that's had PFS for about 10 months now. So Sawyer, thank you so much for joining us, man. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. So as per usual, man, we'll jump into the story here. You mind giving the audience an overview of what your life was like before you got post finasteride syndrome? Yeah. Um, my life was pretty awesome. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so I was... Yeah, 27. Uh, I was, I just got a new job. Everything was going my way, you know. And that's when it's easy to fall into the trap of taking finasteride because yep. everything is going well. And yeah, you notice some hair loss. You're like, you know what? I got to be proactive and correct this issue because I want to keep things going well, right? Yeah, I was like, why not? You see all the ads and, you know, I was, my hair's not even that bad. It's just kind of thinning up on top. Um, so I was like, you know, well, I never had a thick hair of head to begin with. My grandfather on my, you know, mother's side is bald. Uh, so I'm like, well. I got to ask, did you go through a telehealth company or did you go to a, uh, a dermatologist? How did you get the medication? Yeah, Teladox. Keeps, I think. Keeps. That's classic, man. Yep. Yeah. So how was, what was that process like to get the medication? You... Uh, online they ask you to take a picture of your scalp you take a picture of your scalp like minutes later or something you get a phone call or something and they're like oh this is what you know you have whatever male pattern baldness right, right. We recommend taking a finasteride minoxidil like cream so, all right they, so they gave you the topical right you didn't even get the oral version no i could have a picture of my dog and it, they would have said oh yeah, yeah. that dog all in this. Here's finasteride minoxidil. I don't think anyone has ever been denied. I don't. I don't think so either. And I kind of I chuckle about it, but in reality, it's actually a really sick thing. You know that anybody can go on to these websites and get this medication so easily. So uh, I guess going from there, you decided to take the medication. So after you started taking it, uh, what happened? The things I noticed, I did notice my uh, estrogen started going up, right? And right. I started I started feeling that, right? Like I could feel it in my nipples. I could feel like, okay, this is affecting my hormones. And then I started to notice maybe like, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of moodier, right? Like, sure. um, which is really, was really weird for me. Well, but the estrogen changes were probably a direct result from the finasteride though. Yeah. Well, you're inhibiting, yeah. you know, version of excess testosterone to DHT. It's going to be aromatized into estrogen. Yeah, absolutely. You're inhibiting it by, by what, like 70% or something with finasteride. Yeah. So how long after you started taking the medication did you start to notice these these side effects? Well, I, it was probably not too long, really, with the estrogen, at least the mood. What it caused me to stop was I started getting erectile problems that were, like, really noticeable. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to stop. That's not worth it. I'll lose my hair, whatever. So how soon? I mean, how long were you on it for? Just a, a few months, a few weeks? When did you decide to stop? No more than two to three months, yeah. That's it, huh? Real short, short period then, real short exposure. Yep. Okay, so now the next question is, what happened when you came off? I mean, I came off, and then probably a week after I came off, I went out with a friend, and we were uh, in California, and we went on some, like, you know, Napa Valley wine tour or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had some, had some wine. And I think that's what probably caused that first crash. Because I remember in the car back, you know, I'm driving, everything's normal. I'm talking, I'm like, boom, get hit with this, like, 
wave of adrenaline and it feels like you're about to pass out and then it, it goes away and it's like okay well I don't know what that was I, I'm thinking you know maybe it's the altitude maybe it just was messing with my ears or something sure so I just I just put it out of my mind I'm like whatever so yeah probably four days after that mm-hmm. I'm at work you know and I'm uh, going through one of the barricades you know as I'm like going through I start to really feel like oh I'm about to faint again Something is wrong, wrong. And then I just had this massive panic attack. And then after that, man, it was almost like a panic attack every day. I'd wake middle of the night having a panic attack. Uh, and then it was like I would started getting like tinnitus. I started getting like a bunch of eye floaters. I started getting like derealization and depersonalization. Mm-hmm. It was just a constant state of like, confusion and fear i was stuttering my words like i couldn't i couldn't speak yep. like i could speak but it'd be like i'd be you know tripping up on words like i had a shit or something did you did you know at this point that it was related to finasteride no clue so i'm thinking like i have like i must have a brain tumor that's what i thought at first i was thinking dude i have i got a brain tumor so i gotta ask then so from there what what happened did you go to any doctors did you address it i mean what was kind of the breaking point for you yeah, I was, I was going to doctors. You know, the first doctor you go to, they're like, oh, you had a panic attack. I'm like, okay, oh, well, that's that's weird. But whatever, okay. Yeah. And, you know, it keeps happening. You're like, okay, I'm not buying this panic attack thing anymore. Like, did, I'm not, like, anxious about anything when these hit. Like, even if it's a panic attack, like, something is wrong. Uh, you know, we're doing the blood work and everything's coming back fine. You know, thyroid's fine. Yeah. You know, doctors are saying everything's fine. I'm like, okay. So then I go to Tennessee to visit my parents. And while I'm there, you know, I'm talking to my mom. I'm like, hey, something like this is like wrong, wrong. Like, I don't even like recognize my own way of thinking. It feels like it feels like I'm not myself anymore. It feels like like I don't like at that point, it was like the way that I was thinking was foreign to me. Like, I didn't recognize my own thought process. Let me ask you real quick about the panic attacks. Have you ever had a panic attack before all this? No, I didn't know what a panic attack was. I, yeah. you know, I feel bad in hindsight. I'm, I'm a lot better now. So I feel like people watching this won't understand like where I was. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I couldn't, I couldn't have a conversation with somebody without getting busy and like feeling like I'm about to break. Like I'm every day I'm going to bed thinking, I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Like it's, it's, I, I can't. I can't interact with people. I can't go outside without like extreme anxiety. Uh, well, you know, Sawyer, I, I'm not trying to uh, by any means downplay what you've, what you've gone through, but you're also, I mean, based on what you told me, a relatively minor case because you have improved over the course of 10 months, man. And that's not to, again, downplay what you went through or what you're still going through. Um, but I guess one of my points I want to make here is I still really appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story, man, and, and talking about this. Uh, right, this- no, you are almost recovered at this point. I wouldn't say almost recovered. I can't. My I have to keep the strictest diet. I like. Okay. I don't eat any. Uh, like I can't eat any like sugar. I can't drink any alcohol. You know, I have a very weird onset of symptoms that started exactly when I stopped taking this drug. That every like that there's thousands of people who are reporting the exact same thing as soon as right. they start taking this drug. Like that's the common denominator. Every time somebody comes off an asteroid and they develop post an asteroid syndrome, that's always the commonality. They all came off an asteroid and they're all developing the same type of symptoms, the sexual issues, the neurological issues, the physical issues. Um, well, real quick, Sawyer, I don't want to take up too much of your time here, man. Uh, you kind of already answered this. Um, obviously this has impacted your life in multiple ways. You said you're 10 months out, you're, you're feeling, uh, you're feeling better, but you still have the digestive digestive issues, which still affects the, the cognitive issues. How did your family respond to all this? I mean, I think my break was so out of character and so like severe that mm-hmm. they were like, okay, yeah, no, this is not normal. Something is wrong. They knew something was up. Yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, because it was like I went crazy all of a sudden, you know. So they they recognized, yeah, something's going on. They were helping me. You know, I don't know. I think my mom understands and my sister understands. It's, it's hard to like, but for a long time, it was hard to convince them. I mean, I went from being very outgoing, 
uh, and it's coming back. You know, I have I have good days yeah. where I feel almost normal again. But then, yeah, like a week ago, you know, oh, oh, I have I'm still having the anxiety. I I still get the issues. It's just it comes in waves now. Yeah. I mystic that because I do get these windows where I feel normal again. That is, I'm on my way out. Yeah. Um, and you know, but they, they reacted well, I'd say, uh, I know a lot of guys, their family don't care or don't believe them. Yeah. And that'd be brutal. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, man. We do have to hop off here before we hop off. Do you have any closing statements you want to make? Uh, yeah, I just, I guess, you know, really stay away from these <laughs> duct tases guys, like you younger guys, losing your hair, not that big of a deal. Just go to the gym, put on 20 pounds of muscle, and I guarantee you that's going to go a lot farther than a full head of hair.